success of creating and running productive meetings, here we're talking about regular meetings, is based on having the four P's right. And I'm not referring to the four P's of marketing. The four P's are purpose of the meeting, players in the meeting, preparation for the meeting, and finally the plan, which is the agenda of the meeting. Now, the four P's apply to any type of organized meetings, and in particular to what we call the standard meetings that are used uh, to operate a business. So if you develop a good 4P meeting profile and the practice of running your meetings with consistency, then you should achieve another P, which is the payoff. And the payoff of the meeting should be its effectiveness and a sense of achievement for everyone. How would you know that you have a good payoff? When at the, it's when at the end of the meeting you can actually answer for yourselves those three questions. Was the meeting good for the business? Was the meeting good for the team? And finally, was it good for me? And if you can answer those three questions, then you're on your way for meeting effectiveness. But for now, let's rewrite the meeting profile of uh, the previous meeting. So we're going to go uh, through the four P's. I'm not going to go into the details of that particular weekly operations and systems meeting, but I just want to give you a few highlights. And if you've got regular meetings in your organization and all those meetings are purposeful and they are usually linked between each other, then you're starting to build a, a, a structure like a neural network in your business that's going to, to basically guide and control the entire organization. So you will be starting with describing you know, where the meeting happens, uh, how often. Here in this case, it's a weekly meeting that happens every Wednesday. The, the players um, are all the line managers and the chairperson is the operations manager. So just a note here, um, if, when you read studies on, on meetings effectiveness, uh, depending on who you read, they would tell you that the effectiveness of a meeting decre decreases exponentially every time you add one additional member of a six or eight participants. So you don't want passengers. You really want the people that are, that are going to contribute and add value to the meeting. Don't get people that are trying to justify their salary by attending meetings. So critical is to clarify what the purpose of the meeting is so that we don't bring in other items that are going to be time wasters. Uh, in this case, the purpose is to review past week's production performance, to surface unresolved operational issues and manage exceptions to communicate and align functions. At that level, you've got all the head of departments and they don't always talk to each other and they're managing the entire functions of the business. And you, you've, you've got usually unresolved issues between different departments. The nature of the weekly management meeting is really to break down the silos and to surface the, the, the issues between different functions. And you could have service level agreements, for example, between the different functions. And it's good to, to actually have a un, united front when it comes to the communication problems between different departments. The next P is the preparation. And in this case, the better we prepare, the more effective the binting will be. And here we can talk about several things, but you've got different reports from default, for different weeks, for example, or you've got your key performance indicator or your key behavior indicators, charts that you want to update and they're going to be reviewed um, during the course of the meeting, and so on and so forth. And finally, uh, the plan. So the plan, the agenda of the meeting, is a bit like a, a sandwich. You will always have bread that's going to be the same for every single uh, meeting, and the middle part, whatever you do, you put it inside of the sandwich, is really specific to the purpose of the meeting. You will always want to start with a positive welcome. <laughs> At, at least try to establish a positive vibe uh, for the meeting. And then what is really important for us from an MP viewpoint is that we want our customers to actually start by reviewing the task from the previous meeting. Because if you can't close your task from the previous meeting, so why bother creating new tasks for this meeting that we have to close for the next meeting? So this is what it will start the accountability part. We're not going to get into new items in a meeting unless we reviewed uh, the tasks that are due for today. And that's the part which is, which is common to all the meetings that we run, be them uh, electronic or in real life, 
or at a senior management level on the shop floor. Then we've got, we've got the meat of the meeting and what we want to review, which is aligned with the purpose of the meeting. In this particular case, what, what we've done is we just used a particular sequence, which is parallel to, for those who know, the balance scorecard. So we would be starting with finance aspect, then the, the customer and sales aspect, then the operations aspect, and we would be uh, involving quality feedback from Rokobat, and obviously the operational review uh, of the, 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 the performance of the business for the week, uh, looking at the quality, looking at the output or the speed, and, and the cost of operating the business. And then we go to the, the next item, which is the people aspect. And the people aspect, we, we look at two aspects every week. One is people engagement. Are the people, are the employees every day engaged? Or are they leaving their brains at home? Um, and for that, we, we've got different ways of engaging people. And the most powerful ways of engaging people is to help them improve their, their workplace and making their job easier, better, cheaper, faster. And that's a way of, of measuring if people are engaged at work and if leadership is caring enough and to support people's improvement activities. And then finally, we're looking at people training and development. That's a, the, that would be a weekly item, um, reviewing the training plans for the week, or that could be a monthly review of progress in terms of people development. And then we finish the meeting with also the, uh, the bread of the sandwich, the, the staple items that we find in all our meetings, which is to review uh, the, the plan for the next cycle. In this particular case, it would be a weekly cycle. So we probably want to, to know what's going to happen next week and, and give the heads up of what's going to happen the, in, in the following week as well. And, we, and here at management, at, at middle management level, senior management level, you probably want to know what are the audits, internal or external? Is there any particular visit of customers and so on and so forth, salient items for the next uh, week or two? And then finally, the scribe is going to, to recap the tasks and decision made during the meeting so that everybody has got alignment and clarity of what is the expectations between today and, and next week when they will give an account on their tasks. And then um, an item uh, linked to, to lean, lean management. We always want to get better. And we suggest that um, we would ask the question, how can we do this meeting better next week? And try to change one little thing so the, the effectiveness of the meeting and the enjoyment of the meeting gets better and better. So that, that's for the four Ps. But at the same time, at company level, what you really want to do is to start with the ground rules. And your ground rules are going to be aligned with the company values. We've got a collective that's going to meet every shift, every day, every week, every month. You might have a board of directors every three months. Uh, but we really want to have a common code of conduct for the meetings. And that we, we offer you uh, those eight uh, that are pretty straightforward. It's a good basis for discussion with your teams when you want to establish a code of conduct for the meetings. I just want to highlight two of them. The point number two, attendees arrive before the meeting starts. Now, in the first meeting, uh, I think it was David, myself, and who was the third person who came late? Shame on him. Anyway, yes. so they were, at least uh, only the men, eh? the women were on time, you can notice that. So the, the problem with starting 10 minutes late is in our case, we had about six people in the room. So we didn't lose 10 minutes, but we, we lost six times 10 minutes. We lost one hour of senior management time. And you know the rate. So not only um, it's disrespectful not to start on time, and it's going to set the tone um, for the rest of the meeting, but at the same time, it's expensive to the organization. So it's a good thing for top leadership to learn and develop the habit of being on time and even a, a little bit earlier to the meeting as they should be leading by example. Then there's another item, item number seven here, is an agenda is followed. If there's no agenda, there's no meeting. All have bad experience of meetings that are scheduled to last for one hour, that last for one and a half, two hours. We are on topics that are totally unrelated to the purpose of the meeting. So we need to, de to develop the discipline uh, to stick to the agenda and to make some room at the end of the meeting to have a, a, a space to, to discuss general items and to manage those ones. 
because some of the things that we want to share in the meetings are not necessarily on the agenda, uh, but yet they are relevant to the team. So we can't just kick them out, but we need to manage those ones in an orderly manner. And that's, that's the code of conduct. But at the heart of the, of, the, of the meeting, you've got a call for action. A standard meeting could be a pleasant ex experience, but it is not a social club. And we really want to make decisions and we really want to take action. Uh, the action item of the meeting is the task. And Greg, would you mind explaining to us what is a smart task? 